What's going on everyone? In this video, I wanna share my MPH capstone presentation. So one of the requirements of my MPH program was to complete a capstone. And there's two parts to that. One is a paper and one is the presentation. And in this video, I'm just gonna be sharing the presentation. I'll share the paper at a future date. Just know that there's a lot of things that I couldn't include in the presentation just because of time limits. And then even in the paper itself, the topic that I chose is quite broad. So there are a lot of things I wish I could have included in the paper that I, I didn't. But with that being said, the presentation itself is about a topic that is very near and dear to me, which is clinician burnout. Specifically, how the 21st Century Cures Act impacts clinician burnout through health information technology and electronic health records. In informatics, many of the projects that we do and even the day-to-day -day responsibilities that we have are influenced by external factors like legislation. So personally, one of the things that I wanted to learn more of in my MPH program was how we can influence legislation and what are the pieces of legislation that can influence informatics? And this was a very timely piece because the 21st Century Cures Act, I knew kind of that it had provisions in there that could completely transform the informatics landscape. And certainly when you listen to the presentation, you'll see some of those key provisions that do. Again, the presentation itself probably doesn't do it justice. I just hope that you all will get a glimpse of the, some of the things that it's gonna do. If there's anything that I would like the audience to take away from this video, it would be that this le piece of legislation, I think, will completely transform the health informatics landscape. Um, as you listen to the presentation, which has a lot more background, you're kind of see why. And I hope those of us in informatics will pay attention to this uh, piece of legislation, especially the most recent regulations that came out from CMS and ONC, in March of this year because it's gonna change the way we do things. And as it evolves and things get implemented, it, it literally is going to change the way things work. Uh, anyways, I hope you all enjoy the presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brian Fung and I'm a part-time online MPH student. In today's presentation, I'll be sharing the findings from my capstone project Analysis of the 21st Century Cures Act on Reducing Clinician Burden, Attributable to Health Information Technology and Electronic Health Records, a topic that is near and dear to me and one that I'm very passionate about. I'd like to acknowledge my primary capstone advisor, Dr. Lehman, for his guidance on this project, along with Dr. Mason and Dr. Weiner, who are both instrumental in guiding me through this process. I plan to cover five main sections in this presentation. First, a brief review about the background of this topic. Second, the methods I use to address the issue at hand. Third, the major findings from my literature review on clinician burnout. Fourth, the key burden reduction initiatives from the Cures Act. And lastly, the implications the Cures Act may have on clinician burnout. All right, so let's start with the background. Let's begin by talking about how we got here. So back in 1999, a vision for safer healthcare systems was conveyed through two landmark reports by the Institute of Medicine, now the National Academy of Medicine, through quality and transparency. In 2009, this vision was realized through the High Tech Act, which invested over $37 billion of incentives to hospitals and providers that implemented electronic health records, or EHRs, in a timely manner as late adopters would be penalized. While this resulted in aggressive timelines, it also transformed the healthcare environment in the United States and how patients receive care, how providers deliver care, and how care is regulated. Though it was also likely a key contributor in clinician burnout. Over time, the growing incidence of clinician burnout became the impetus for many publications on the topic, including a report by the National Academy of Medicine that was recently published in December 2019. Given the multifactorial etiology of burnout, they suggest a systems approach to reducing burnout that needs to be tackled on three levels. Frontline care delivery, 
which is where the interactions occur between learners, clinicians, and patients. This also includes the tools and technologies involved in these interactions, such as EHRs. Healthcare organizations, which pertains to the organization's culture, its policies, and payment and reward systems. Lastly, there's the external environment, which encompasses all of the political and societal factors, such as federal laws and regulations. In light of all this, the enactment of the Cures Act in 2016 becomes very interesting. Some of its key provisions, namely those in Title IV, explicitly impacts those areas discussed in the conceptual model by the National Academy of Medicine and has the potential to positively impact clinician burnout. These three sections, which we'll expand upon later, are sections 4001, reducing administrative burden in the form of documentation and regulations, section 4002, improving usability of EHRs, and section 4003, to increase usability, interoperability by making data more accessible. Now let's switch gears and talk about the methods. So to answer the question at hand, three objectives were carried out. The first of which involved a review of the literature on the association between burnouts and EHRs. Full text articles in the last five years were included and enhanced by additional articles from its references and reports from authoritative organizations. Secondly, the burden reduction initiatives of the Cures Act were reviewed and documented. And lastly, the likely impact cures will have on clinician burnout is analyzed and discussed. So now let's share some of the major findings from the literature. In the literature, I found three areas of consensus and one area that is a bit of a disagreement or gap. Starting with the areas of consensus, documentation burden was by far the most commonly cited EHR related predictor in the burnout crisis and likely a primary driver of EHR dissatisfaction. With the transition towards value-based care and increased regulation from payers for reimbursement, it is suspected that increased documentation has been getting worse. Chief amongst the documentation issues is the Evaluation and Management Codes, or EM codes, which are a set of billing codes for patient visits that reflect the paper charting paradigms of the past and still require providers to document certain data elements, even if they already exist elsewhere in the chart. Secondly, poorly designed EHRs is another well-documented area of frustration. Critics commonly cite the aggressive timelines of high tech in which the focus was on implementation and not on designing systems that aligned with clinicians' workflows. Lastly, and also related to the pace of EHR implementations spurred by high tech is the lack of interoperability caused by formation of information silos as individual providers and organizations race to implement their EHR systems. And this happened both internally and externally. For example, Nurses may be required to manually enter data into smart pumps within their organizations, and prescribers may need to log into multiple programs to access external data, like state prescription drug monitoring programs. Finally, one major area of disagreement is the association between burnout caused by EHRs and patient outcomes. One of the most compelling arguments came from a systematic review that showed that associations between burnout and patient outcomes came predominantly from studies that incorporated physician perceptions. Studies that included the clinical chart, however, found no such relationship. While this systematic review did not completely refute that there is no association, the authors concluded that the relationship may not be as overt as originally speculated. In light of these findings, we should continue to conduct well-designed research to advance our understanding. Now let's move on to a brief review of the major burden reduction initiatives in CURES. So in light of time, I'll just briefly describe them. The first major, albeit indirect initiative is the modifications to the EM codes, the first in over 25 years that will take advantage of the EHR with policies such as removal of the requirement to document data elements that already exist in the chart. The second is an EHR reporting program that is meant to collect usability information from vendors and publicly display them to inform consumer purchasing decisions. Third is the USCDI, which is a set of common data elements required for data exchange to participate in the EHR certification program. Fourth is the requirement that HL7 Fire be used as the standard API in various transactions in healthcare which largely enables patient access to their health records from EHRs, but also requires the use for 
CMS regulated payers in the patient access and provider directory APIs. And lastly, there's TEFCA, which serves as a common agreement by which information can be easily exchanged across disparate health information networks. Moving on to our final section, what are the key implications? If we map the provisions and cures back to the literature, four implications can be drawn. Modification of the EM codes will likely have a positive impact on reducing documentation burden. In fact, minor modifications were already made in calendar year 2019 and were likely beneficial. However, the major provisions are actually coming in calendar year 2021. So why the uncertainty? Because these codes only apply to public and not commercial payers. And historically, there have been examples in which commercial payers were reluctant to adopt new code changes, which can actually make it worse for frontline providers who would then have to adopt to two different coding systems. How the 2021 changes are implemented will certainly factor into the success as well. Secondly, usability may improve indirectly as public awareness and pressure continues. However, the EHR reporting program didn't actually make the cut in the finalized rule by ONC in March of this year due to budget cuts. Though some benefit is likely to be expected as section 4002 of CURES did it remove EHR vendors from requiring authorizations from healthcare organizations that wanted to share screenshots for the purposes of improving usability. Third, improvements to interoperability are unlikely to be realized in the short term. The finalized rules from ONC and CMS, which served to fulfill these initiatives from CURES, weren't published until March of 2020. Implementation timelines ranged from three months to 12 months, TEFCO wasn't finalized and not also required for CMS payers, and expansion of HL7 FIRE to additional use cases, especially those that involve payer workflows, will take additional time. Perhaps one of the more disappointing aspects of CURES is the lack of informatics training. Despite wide recognition that variations in local site implementations play a large role in user satisfaction and user experience, incorporation of informatics training was missing. There's still an opportunity to influence incorporation of this in the EHR reporting program, and hopefully that'll be considered. In conclusion, enactment of CURES is a landmark piece of legislation that can address all three levels of the National Academy of Medicine's clinician burnout model. However, effectiveness will be driven profoundly on crucial factors that will dictate its success. Amidst the ongoing pandemic, realization of the benefits from cures will likely be delayed for an unknown amount of time. And here are my references and thank you all for your time.